Shortly after Bodies, Bodies, Bodies came out, I watched it in theaters with a friend. I entered the theater armed with my A24 socks and an abundance of high expectations and exited a little confused. Both of us, in fact, couldn't quite articulate how we felt about the film. I liked it, certainly. It was funny, well made, but there was something about it that I couldn't put my finger on. I think now it was perhaps its goal to contain both empathy and critique of Gen Z. So as silly and fun as the film is, it did make me genuinely think about the many attempts in film and TV to critique and satirize Gen Z. Needless to say, satire goes both ways, both shaping perceptions of Gen Z and reflecting the cultural zeitgeist of what Gen Z is like. This creates some pretty consistent representations of Gen Z people with varying degrees of success. One of the most obvious identifying features of Gen Z characters on screen is the way they speak. Like any generation, Gen Z has unique terms and ways of speaking, largely originating online. That said, it's worth noting that what's typically perceived as Gen Z slang contains a lot of AAVE, African American Vernacular English, making it not just unique to the generation. That being said, slang is a huge part of portrayals of Gen Z characters. It's often misused. After all, it is usually being written by people who don't use these words. Yo, if this doctor keeps leaving us on red, he's gonna catch hands on gang. In this way, slang on screen tends to lean into satire, portraying today's teens as acronym-obsessed valley girl types incapable of forming a coherent sentence. Another significant aspect of Gen Z's language use is a ton of buzzwords, thrown around to the point that they have very little meaning, making satirized characters speak like they're the most annoying Twitter user ever. Your parents are upper middle class. On the note of Twitter, it's also worth noting that these characters tend to be hyper online. Whether this online presence is casually dropped into dialogue, hey everyone, welcome back to Boom Talk, or a focal point of the film, it's not a Gen Z centered film without it. I kind of hate the term chronically online, but that's basically what a lot of these characters are. Their vocabulary is full of so many terms popular online that they don't seem to understand that it's almost incomprehensible. You fing trigger me. You're emotionally abusive. This isn't always satirized to an extreme, though. There are certainly more realistic portrayals of Gen Z characters who are just attuned to topics relating to gender and sexuality and really most forms of social justice. You don't need to use the n-word and use a fire hose on black people to be racist, Haley. That being said, the obsessive, hypersensitive activist is definitely a trope pretty common in portrayals of Gen Z. Oh my god, let go of me! You're hurting me! You're killing him! You're on videotape, ma'am! Stop assaulting my friend! and is almost constant in Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Don't call her a psychopath, it's so ableist. But before I talk about that, let's talk about social media. From the very beginning of Bodies, 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 each relationship is shaped because of technology and social media. From boyfriends... I don't know, I think I always found them on Tinder. ...to the entire friend group dynamic. Why is everyone so obsessed with the chat? Even before meeting, everyone's perceptions of each other are shaped by social media presences. They're all so impressive. These reminders lay the groundwork for an important theme of the film. How the consistently flawed, dare I say, toxic... You are so toxic! ...relationships here are intertwined with social media. The chaos of the night is brought about by a lack of reception and Wi-Fi, but their behavior thereafter still mimics social media. The irrational, fear-induced groupthink, the name-calling and arguing, I wish they had chopped off your head instead, you spineless piece of shit. And even without direct access to the internet, it still manages to drive characters apart. Checker texts? In fact, while many horror movies end with some return to the norm or safety, the serial killer is defeated, the main characters return home, or they're saved by a friend, Bodies, Bodies, Bodies ends with the words, I have reception. These characters' version of safety. At the same time, the film manages to not entirely feel like a mockery of Gen Z behavior. In its soundtrack, aesthetic, and marketing, it does certainly feel like it's aimed at Gen Z, not at older generations intent on mockery. Maybe this is partially what sets Bodies, Bodies, Bodies apart, in a world where most media like this contains attitudes on technology that are very clearly not from a Gen Z perspective. Even if, in those cases, those perspectives are put into teenage characters' mouths. They're not strangers. They're followers. Followers? You mean like a cult? Though Bodies, Bodies, Bodies may have done it best, it's obviously not the only film to critique how social media can reveal people's dark sides. Films like Ingrid Goes West or Sissy both portray characters going to insane, criminal lengths to keep up an image on social media, while Spree and Not Okay contain similar criticisms about the lengths people will go to to achieve virality. Even when not pushed to violent extremes, it goes without saying that most films are quick to show Gen Z as social media-obsessed zombies. 
My entire generation is a bunch of mouth breathers. They literally have a seizure if you take their phone away for a second. They can't communicate without emojis and they actually think that the world wants to know that they are eating a taco. These criticisms often just don't land though, perhaps because they're so clearly from an outside perspective. When characters say things like, You can't enjoy this without sharing it with like 500 strangers. The lack of anyone under 30 in the writer's room is almost palpable. On the other hand, Bodies 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 manages to create critiques grounded in reality by giving us Gen Z characters that, although annoying, somehow also feel real. Though Bodies 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 may be a good critique of our generation's relationship with technology, I think the more important, or at least equally important, aspect of the film is how it portrays perspectives on social justice. I understand and I'm an ally. The main way this manifests itself is how the characters are obsessed with terminology without any real understanding of what they're saying. Like what's next, you're gonna call me a narcissist? Or a foot soldier of like the white supremacy? Like The buzzwords slash phrases peppered into the vocabulary almost feel memorized, like default responses taken from Twitter threads that they can fall back on as defense. It's creative nonfiction, which is a valid response to life in an attention economy. This understandably upsets one of the characters, David. Gaslight is like one of the most overused words ever to like the point of annihilation. You read the internet, or like, congrats, you have a Twitter account. She doesn't have a thought in her fucking head that hasn't been said by anybody else. And though perhaps his critique is a little on the nose when it comes to the film's message, it does pretty well express what most audiences are thinking. After all, these are not characters who are actually victims of gaslighting or emotional abuse or ableism or any of the words they use. They're mostly rich, spoiled kids who bring out the worst in each other. So along with being good punchlines, these are important critiques to make, because activism can easily reach a point of being so surface level, it's absolutely pointless. Wow, so not all brown people know each other. Oh my god, we do! People of color have built such supportive communities for themselves and it's so brave. In fact, it can be harmful to be as detached from reality as some of these characters are. My mom has borderline. Mental health is a really serious issue. I mean, I've never actually said this to anyone, but I have body dysmorphia. But of course, there are also difficult critiques to make. This film is simultaneously marketed to Gen Z and trying to critique us, so it's an awkward line to walk. Because it's easy to frame this as condescending, portraying Gen Z as this woke, hypersensitive monolith. How will women become inspired to be CEOs of mid-sized building services companies if our language doesn't allow for it? As a diverse organization, we need to use more inclusive language. But Bodies, Bodies, Bodies does a pretty impressive job of this. Not to mention that there's a variety of other media portraying Gen Z activism as something more educated and grounded in the real world. Mostly due to social media, society currently sees rapid change in a way it never has before. This ridiculously fast fluctuation of culture, specifically internet culture, adds a whole new layer of difficulty to the challenge of making a solid Gen Z film. Even a film like Bodies, 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 for example, which was well done, will inevitably feel ancient as its slang terms and trends of choice fall out of fashion. This might contribute to the failure of some films in this genre. Each one is like a tiny time capsule for the month it was written in, soon feeling irrelevant and cheesy. Of course, I have to also admit that perhaps some of the original discomfort I felt with Bodies, 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 or similar films, is simply that I don't enjoy being critiqued. But as Orwell writes, every generation imagines itself to be more intelligent than the one that went before it, and wiser than the one that comes after it. Perhaps older generations are destined to critique Gen Z, just as we will probably critique the generations that come after us. And perhaps some of these critiques are based in over-the-top fear of technology, and moral panics, and misused slang. But at the same time, we shouldn't be afraid to take a moment to reflect on them every once in a while. Thanks for watching. It's been a busy few months, so I'm sorry for the irregular upload, but that's just me fighting against Gen Z stereotypes by not using social media that much. So if you want to support that, feel free to subscribe or like or do any of those things. Thanks for watching.